All right, Mopar people, welcome back to the channel. I'm just Mopar Joe. Today I'm gonna to try to show you how to keep your spark together in your old Mopar. So here's a 508 I've been building and I've kind of been taking my time on it. Um, and for good reason, getting this stuff right. So if you've ever put a timing light on and looked at the light and you can see the, bal the balancer and the line all jumping around, off your zero i think there's a couple reasons for that one the chain could be sloppy and worn out you already know that but say you've got a good chain you just replaced your chain or whatever um the majority of us know mopars and all engines i'm assuming most v8 engines take an intermediate shaft to connect the oil pump to the cam to drive the oil pump so i've got my oil pump on mounted up and everything but before i did that i checked my intermediate shaft. So this is the intermediate shaft um, that was bought to be used with the engine. And it's from a company that makes a lot of 440 parts. And I just kind of was laying it beside this other one. This is a Mylodon on the left here. So if you see the black shaft, it is a 4330 chrome molly shaft and bronze gear used with roller cams. Stock oil pumps, internal pickups. There's a part number, big block Chrysler, wedge or Hemi. So here's Old Faithful here. So both shafts are pinned. And I'll show you just real quickly on my videos of dropping these in uh, without an oil pump in. And my tower bushing, that's what I would call that, right there is nice and new. It is not worn out, sloppy, or anything like that. So showing you that. Watch this slack. Seems like a lot. Mylodon. That gave me a little cause for concern there. And I said, huh. So I'm glad I had both to the both of these to compare. So right now I thought, well, maybe it was because the oil pump was not mounted up in that other video. So I will drop in this 440 shaft here. Drop her on down. And this is this is totally bone dry. So I realize oil does uh, take up a little bit of slack and all that. So let me get you uh, kind of a better angle again. There we go. Steady it up. And I just grab my gear. And you can see that amount of movement. So yes, this will be full of oil. That will dampen some of that. So, and we realize it, okay. So, and I thought, well, you know, maybe this gear on this cam is a little worn. This is a used cam, um, but it, it's really in good shape. So I saw that. Now I dropped my Mylodon in. So now we can see the Mylodon still has just a little bit of slack there. And I would say at a certain point, there has to be slack there because you, you it's just like anything. There has to be some kind of backlash or slack between the gears so they don't eat each other. Also, when this cam walks back and forth, which it will, it does have a cam button and I set that up like I did on my 400. So if you haven't seen that, go check out that video. But this dude, that little bit of slack right there, I'm okay with that. So... We talked about spark scatter, or some of when you're seeing that that balancer go crazy when your light's on it. The way I discovered this before, I had dropped a distributor in a, a new distributor in an engine that had just been rebuilt. Everything was new, even it had a, a new intermediate shaft from, I believe it was melling. So a new melling shaft, hydraulic flat tappet cam. And I could rev on the engine, it revved strong, but when it was coming down off that rev, it would, it would just break up <laughs> like that. So I was scratching my head, scratching my head, and come to find out the distributor that I dropped in, the end of the shaft right here was not fully engaging the intermediate shaft that was being used. My simple fix for that I took my MIG welder and I stacked a weld right there on the end of this. 
and I went, I bulged it out just a little. I pulled my intermediate shaft out, and then I just took a flat file and filed it on both sides. Tried to eyeball it, keep it even. Didn't let it hang over the sides or anything like that. And I then kept test fitting it into the end of the shaft. I put all that back together and it worked beautifully. The problem went away and was solved. So that may be something you want to think about if you're having some issues like that in your old Mopar. And, you know, if you've got an old stock distributor you think to pick up still good and whatever, that end there could have worn out over years and years just like inside of the intermediate shaft. So I would say if you're doing a new engine build, consider a good high quality intermediate shaft. So I want to show you the difference in these two. So here's our 440 shaft. I'll drop it back in and I'll drop our distributor in. When you go to put a distributor in, this was something else I wanted to say. This area inside of here needs to be nice and clean. I've scraped all the paint out and wiped it out. It's actually, I think, more important than this section, which I did scrape all that paint out too. It had a big drip right in here. They do give you a little paper gasket in the kits that seals this side, but the majority of the sealing is with this beautiful O-ring right here. So I've forgotten to put the little gasket in before. It's just fine. And if you want to get a little more engagement on your shaft down in the other shaft, leave the gasket out. It shouldn't leak. So that O-ring is very powerful. It does a great job. Anyway, let me go back to the 440 shaft and show you the difference right here. So here's our 440 shaft in, distributor is in, and I wanna show you that it is all the way engaged. It cannot go down any further. It's all the way down. The O-ring is nice and tight in this as I rotate that. So it, it has a, it'll have a little bit of rock until you put the hold down on it. But just right now as it, show, as it stands, here we go. I'm just going to touch and you got to keep your eye on the ball here. So you see the shaft coming down here. You see the uh, top of that bronze gear. So that dampens a little bit of our play there, side to side on the gear here, which is fine. I expected that, but I'm going to grab the rotor up here. If there was a rotor, watch that one. Can you see it shimmy? So now we have, I don't know, take a guess, three or four thousandths back and forth that way. And now we got six or eight thousandths at the bottom, whatever it is. But now I'm, you rev your engine, rev, and it's spinning naturally as it would. And then you let off and all this stuff is like a chain reaction. So this one shakes. Just for a second, it may reverse. This one reverses, same time. And that's all at the same time as the cam walks just back and forth, just barely a little bit. Like I said, this does have a cam button in it, but it's a roller cam, so it has to walk some. Let me show you the Mylodon now. So our Mylodon is in, and you can see I don't even have it seated all the way yet. I wanted to show you the nice positive lock and action of that right there. Snap. So, of course, the hold down is going to hold it better. But smooth and nice distributor. Let me bring in here where you can see. Just what happens here. See a little bit of the backlash on the gear to the cam. And now I'll grab my rotor up top. And I'll bring you back in. See if you can see any movement there. It's almost non-existent. Also, when the oil bushes that up, I think it's going to be nice and tight. So... Overall, I would say that Mylodon gear is a lot nicer. Brand new, both brand new gear. It's a lot nicer than that other one. So keep that in mind. If you got an old Mopar out there that's having a little spark problems, that could be part of it. I appreciate y'all watching. And my the video of me showing the degree into that cam and how the dot to dot was off is over 20 something thousand views now. So I appreciate y'all and I'll catch you next time.
Don't forget about our purple car here.